is Assad Umar. He's the Minister of Finance for Pakistan. As we all know, this is a new government and it is in the midst of committing to a new strategic future, uh, prioritizing the building of human capital. Assad Umar, the Minister of Finance for Pakistan. Thank you very much and uh, thanks for inviting me to, uh, to participate. As you mentioned, uh, we are a new government. Uh, we are relatively a new political well, uh, brought into governance at the federal level for the first time. And one of the reasons why we have been voted into power, at least that's what we believe, is the fact that our manifesto and the, and the communication of our leader is centered around human development. Uh, as Dr. Kim uh, pointed out earlier, obviously countries need an infrastructure uh, for development and growth. Uh, and you also need to develop your people. Uh, so you need both, but it's a question of what do you prioritize and what comes first in your mind. And uh, so it's probably for the first time that a party has been voted into power in Pakistan, which believes that human capital development is absolutely central to the development of the country on a sustainable basis and places it at the top of its priorities. And, and that to me is the first step in any change that you want to make, it's the prioritization. And, uh, and some of the things, as I said, you will find in the manifesto, uh, but the kind of thing which catches pe people's attention, I've even heard in the last two days, people I've met here uh, commenting on it, uh, the first speech of the Prime Minister, he spoke at length about the problem of stunting and, and how it's limiting the potential of Pakistan and the need to address it. Uh, so hopefully this uh, prioritization will be reflected in the investments that we make as we move forward. Uh, obviously, it's just been seven weeks since we've come in. And, uh, and, and obviously, without resources, you cannot make changes. So that's uh, certainly a priority or certainly a prerequisite. But I strongly believe, at least that's been our experience in Pakistan, I assume that would be the case around the world. It's not just the resources, it's how well you use them. And, and governance, therefore, becomes a key. And uh, even though we've been voted to power for the first time in the center, uh, our party did hold uh, a provincial government. One of the provinces was run by us uh, five years back. We voted in power there. And our experience there showed how critical the governance changes are. And, uh, and I'll mention some of these as I go along. It may seem very rudimentary, very simple to you. Uh, but in the case like Pakistan, small changes uh, can have big impacts. Let me talk a little bit about uh, the health area and what we need to do or what we are planning to do in order to uh, improve the outcomes that we are seeing in the health area. Clearly, neither in education nor in health do we see the outcomes uh, that the people of Pakistan really deserve. Uh, in the area of health, one, one of the principal decisions that we have made is to reprioritize. One is to increase the resources, which has to be done, but even then, obviously, we'll have finite resources at our hand. Uh, and we have seen... And that's the reflection of the kind of elite capture of society or, and policy making that you see in Pakistan. Uh, a disproportionately high budget allocation for tertiary health care compared to primary health care. And, uh, and as the, in the Human Capital Index or the World Bank rightly emphasizes, it's those investments in primary health care which have the much greater impact on the lives of most of the people. people particularly the children who are the future. Uh, so that reprioritization is, is one of the priorities. The other thing that we had done in the province and now we're rolling it out uh, at a federal level uh, is a health insurance scheme. We call it an INSAF health card, uh, INSAF being part of the name of the political party that we have. It's, it means justice. And it's a health care scheme which has been very effective uh, in not just uh, basically giving the power of uh, decision making into the hands of the consumers. So using the same government budget, but providing it through the demand side rather than the supply side, which is traditionally the way uh, things have been done. Uh, and, and that has a very powerful impact because the, the consumer then acts as the principal agent of accountability and it improves performance because if you don't perform, you don't have patients coming in. And, uh, and, and I think that's also a major part of the governance reform that needs to be made. Uh, instead of the bureaucrats uh, deciding how much money will go where, if we put more and more money into the hands of the people and the consumers and let them decide, uh, it can have uh, a, a really positive impact. Uh, the other change that, that on the health side we need to make is there is not enough uh, attention given to nutrition. Uh, 
and we're looking at uh, school nutrition programs. Some have been launched at a, at a limited level, but that's an area that needs to be uh, increased. And the second change of emphasis is moving more towards prevention, moving more uh, towards prevention and uh, immunization programs. Uh, Melinda Gates is here. The Gates Foundation has worked very closely with Pakistan with a very, very successful polio program or a polio eradication program. And, and we're hoping uh, that this year might be uh, the last year in which we have a case of polio uh, in, in Pakistan. So other immunization, immunization programs uh, of similar nature have to be prioritized because they have a very, very strong impact. On the, on the education side, obviously you need more schools. There are a lot of children who are not in school. And in particular in Pakistan, the gender disparity increases tremendously as you go from primary schools to secondary schools. Uh, and the reason for that are the social conditions in Pakistan, particularly in the rural areas where girls cannot travel far from home. Uh, so there are more primary schools. So the distance from where a, a girl child resides and the primary school is, is less than the distance to the secondary school. And therefore, the dropout ratio from the primary to the secondary uh, system is much higher amongst girls. So we need to get schools out there. Uh, but there is a limit to how many schools you can build with the, with the limited budgets. So we need to leverage technology. Technology. And that's, that's a major part of the plans going forward, is to leverage technology so that we are able to go beyond brick and mortar and be able to access and reach children, even in remote areas. Pakistan has uh, some of the highest mountains in the world, and, and then you've got big deserts, all kinds of logistical challenges, and using technology can really help there. Uh, and uh, to, to help increase access for, uh, for children. And of course, another part which is related directly to budget allocations is increasing teachers. But quality is important. And that's, uh, I'm, I'm very glad to see that built into the Human Capital Index here. It's not just the number of years of schooling, but it's the quality of education that you get there. And uh, again, simple things, as I said, I mentioned to you earlier, uh, may seem very rudimentary to you. The teacher attendances in schools, particularly in remote areas, was very poor because the teachers wouldn't turn up or would not turn up frequently uh, the student attendances fell and of course when teachers are not present and students are not coming to school the quality of education the learning outcomes are bound to be poor so simple things like biometric verifications and online verification of teacher attendance uh, resulted in significant increases in teacher attendance and wherever te teacher attendance went up the student attendance went up and uh, this is a relatively re recent work that has been done and I'm sure uh, we'll see learning outcomes improve as a result. And obviously, many, many more things that need to be done. We look forward to uh, the fact, and, and I completely agree with the World Bank president, somehow when you put things in an index, there's something in a human being uh, which, is inherit, which makes us innately competitive. So when you see yourself lagging in an index, it gives you an impetus to do what you should have been doing otherwise in any case. Uh, so hopefully this index will have an impact around the world and we'll all compete harder with each other, uh, not to build more bombs and missiles, uh, but to produce better schools and provide better health care for our children. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Those are worthy, lofty goals, and I really like that spirit of competition human competition, it's excellent. So I'm sure you'll be climbing up the rankings too. Now let me call to stage a global leader who's champion